Hi, Heidi. Hi. Uh, we, I just wanted to mention before we get going that last week uh, we told our listeners that we would add in the description of last week's uh, talk on Kundalini a couple of links. Um, one was for the book and one was for the TRE exercises. And if someone um, hadn't noticed, they are in there now. So if you want to go back and look at them, they're in the notes um, from last week. And this week we wanted to kind of continue on that kundalini slash energy topic i'm getting into more detail on the chakras and how they contribute to kundalini so before we get into athena um, we'll ask robin um, did you have a lot of um, experience with the chakras and opening them did you feel that your chakras were mainly open when you did the kundalini or did you feel like you had areas where they were stuck and the kundalini just moved through them anyway um, there were definitely areas that they were stuck. <clears throat> and once you release the Kundalini, it's like letting the genie out of a bottle. It's going to blaze its way through. And if it can't get through after repeated hits, which I had in a few centers, it could veer off and get what is called the partial, partial Kundalini awakening. Mm -hmm. um, and some people call that like a crisis or whatever. I don't know. I never really call it a crisis, although I'll tell you it wasn't very pleasant. Like there was a lot of emotional upheaval and a lot of crap that kind of came with it and i knew that something had happened that didn't make me feel very happy so i think a lot of what it does what kundalini really does i think it's important to say is it's a consciousness that shines a light on everything in you that's kind of preventing you from being in your wholeness or full or what you perceive let's use that probably a better term as being not good about yourself or you know maybe you have a negative thought about somebody and then you just judge yourself or it's just like every move you make when it's counterproductive to <clears throat> spiritual advancement it's like you get hyper aware of it that's what it does it's like this awareness that it's sometimes you just can't even stand it anymore because you think there's no way i can never have a negative thought but yet it's like every time you get one, it's magnified and in your face. So that that's what I would say in the beginning, what it was like. And so, you know, you could get a little down on yourself because you're, you've got this idea in your head that you should be better than this or you should be not having a thought of jealousy or of anger or whatever it is you're experiencing as a human. And the more you judge it, uh, I thought it was because I was having that emotion. That's why I was feeling so terrible. But really why I was feeling so terrible is not just accepting myself for the way I was feeling in any given experience I was having. I kind of misconstrued thinking that you should be more perfect than that, better than that, you know? And then I'd feel really negative and icky. And I thought I was feeling negative and icky because I was icky. And it was, it was just the way I was thinking about it basically. So I think the good news is you're human and you're going to have these experiences where you feel kind of crappy or you say something or you have a thought about something that you know touches a wound in you and maybe you react some way you wish you wouldn't have um but the reason you feel so terrible is your judgment of yourself not because you actually did something that terrible or wrong that's how i would explain that yeah so for people who have <clears throat> opened all their energy centers do you think that the experience of having the kundalini rise would be much more milder than say somebody who had blocked blockages in the chakras yes um somebody that's really like um understanding the process that would go about um really doing a lot of the inner work on themselves prior mm -hmm. to having the yeah. the kundalini rise and so yeah there's many people where they would talk about it, it was nothing but a pleasant experience and i think for me it, it's good because i've been in all aspects of it i've been in the i had the partial then i had it come down through my head a couple of years later things got better after that but it was pretty hellish for a couple of years when it when it was partially raised because it was 
it was just like, I felt really out of balance. That's the only way I can explain it. And I've done a lot of reading, they call it, some people go crazy. I, I mean, I never really accepted that as a possibility. Yeah. I knew I had a partial rising. I could definitely tell something happened that, you know, mm -hmm. had upset the apple cart. But I just had this knowing that eventually I would figure it out or that it would work mm -hmm. out. And, and that's what happened. But it did take two years. And I think the important thing to mention, humans are impatient, me included. And this is a 20 some year process that I've been in. And I'm not saying it has to be 20 years for everybody, but it certainly can be. And so you just can't really set a time limit on it of how long mm -hmm. it's going to take. You don't know where you are in your evolutionary path. And maybe your past life, you know, or lives, whatever led up to this moment, you don't know what someone else has done or not done. And so, uh, you know, that that's just something to consider. But there's, there's, it's, it's definitely a separate consciousness that has its own agenda. And it, it just moves in different ways. Like I, I think I mentioned last week, I have a lot of, um, a lot of movements going on, you know, mm -hmm. and I can tell what's the energy trying to move up my body. And when, and, and now I start doing reading and research too. And I think I find it, I'm sure I still have some blockages. Uh, certainly everything's not perfect in my life. There's certain areas that get me lit up or that don't go so well for me. And mm -hmm. so um, it's kind of by these jerky movements, it's actually the energy trying to break through those patterns of uh, stuck energy or places where you're kind of closed or, that are causing you problems, you know? And so I think it's a good thing. I can definitely tell when I'm doing it, it feels really good. It feels mm -hmm. really blissful and relaxing and um, kind of a high feeling, you know? Yes. So, you know, you know that and you don't, and you want to do it. It's like every day you just want to set the time aside to do it. And that, bear in mind, I've been doing this for 20 years. I haven't been doing that every day. It runs in periods. It like, mm -hmm. it runs in periods where you go hard at it for a while and then there's nothing. You just, mm -hmm. nothing happens and you don't do anything. You have no desire to do anything. So I'm just trying to make that clear to people is that that, that can happen, like where you'll be hot after all these practices and all this research and reading and, you know, trying to do things that you think you should do. You're kind of led along a path and then all of a sudden you just get dropped and then you just go back to life and you don't do anything for a while. Mm -hmm. And so it's, there's definitely some kind of whatever it's doing, it's got its own way of doing it. And yeah. I can't claim to know what that is, but all I can tell you, it's quite a process. It's not something um, that you can find any rhythm to or reason for, or, um, you know, there, it just does its thing when it does its thing. And there's nothing you're going to do to hold it back or to push it forward, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, today I thought it would be good if we expanded a little bit by breaking down each of the chakras and what emotional upheavals you might have if they're out of balance, what physical issues you might have. And then we're gonna, um, we're gonna ask Athena to uh, walk us through these chakras and these answers to these questions. Hopefully it'll help people just have a little bit more clarity on the whole picture of the energy system. So mm -hmm. let, let's uh, welcome Athena in and we're gonna start with the root chakra, um, which is located at the very base, you know, of your spine, um, it is associated with your basic needs, um, and just in general, some of these things are for each chakra. There's there's a couple symptoms that could be for more than one, but for this one in particular, people who have anxieties or fears um, would be an emotional reaction to this chakra being out of alignment, um, and then physical symptoms. Uh, trouble with your colon, your bladder, your low back, your knee, your legs, feet. Um, so Athena, if you could just give us um, some idea of what people could look for um, that yes. would cue them into knowing that their root chakra was not in alignment. Yes. Uh, fundamentally, the root chakra is your base or the thing that uh, is connecting you to the earth. Let's use that term. Yeah. So this is where a lot of fear comes in because one needs to support themselves. One needs to make money. One needs to take care of the children. One needs to eat. You see, all of these things are contributing factors to uh, whether or not one feels safe, uh, dependent upon how they have lived in their past lives, in their lineage, how they have viewed what their parents have gone through. These are all determining factors of how a human will uh, enter the earth plane and what beliefs they will hold in the perception uh, that they have about the life that they're living. You can become, uh, as Robin has become older, uh, once in a while her kids will come to her uh, with a little worry or concern. And she will say this to them 
all I can tell you is through my life experience, it always works out. Everything's okay. Mm -hmm. See, So mm -hmm. as she's getting a little bit older, she's deciding to give up the fears because she knows that they were senseless, that they really, uh, she's still alive. Uh, things are still going along. Uh, everyone said that you're going to lose all your money. People can lose their house. Uh, we could go on and on on the list of things that humans become fearful of in the economy and um, in their races and in many different areas of concerns that they have as they live on the earth. But the, the longer you are upon it, the more aware that you become that uh, take a lot to wipe you out. Yes, let's use that term. So uh, this is this is primarily what we would tell you. It is very natural. It is the root and basically uh, how rooted you are, how stable your tree trunk is or your roots are, is primarily dependent upon the roots that you come from, you see. Many humans uh, dependent upon what their parents experienced, how they saw them suffer or not suffer, uh, will be what will be their base. It will be what they have to pull from. Now, this is not to say that you cannot change that tendency or that you cannot adopt different ways of thinking and that you cannot now, as Robin has in her older age, uh, she has adopted the belief she doesn't get so worked up about news or uh, the end of the planet or uh, too much population or not enough food or wars or whatever it is that someone wants to throw at her. She has just decided that she's going to keep her focus on a pleasantry that she is wanting to achieve or wanting to see in the world. And then she's just going to let go of all of the other things that are attached to it. So this is a choice that a human has, but primarily I think we've explained uh, pretty clearly why you have the fears that you do and what could cause you to be a little blocked uh, in, uh, in this area. We'd also like to mention uh, when you are blocked in this area, you could be blocked physically. There would be not much you know, elimination. Sometimes people go days without relieving themselves. And this is partly tied into that issue too of holding uh, of the center not spinning. You are not able to eliminate uh, the way that uh, uh, you should, yes. So uh, there are many uh, books out that you can buy uh, that describe the centers. Um, and we have talked before, Heidi, when you are doing uh, some breath work or breathing into each one of the chakras and checking them out as Robin used to do, you will definitely start to feel a very heavy pulsation in a chakra that is blocked. And this is a good way for you to detect whether or not this is something that needs work or not. Yeah. And would you say that <laughs> chakras when they're open they stay open or do they open and close very frequently they are opening and closing uh, dependent upon what it is you are experiencing and how you are perceiving the experience if you perceive in fear they will close if you perceive in openness i am not afraid they will stay open so you are the determiner of whether they will contract or open okay uh and then i just had um Matthias De Stefano is somebody that I enjoy listening to some of his stuff. And for each chakra, he has a question that you should ask yourself. So I was just going to share mm -hmm. that with our listeners. And for mm -hmm. the root chakra, um, he's well, he says it's important for generating new stuff. We're creators emotionally, mentally, physically, we create. And the question we should be asking ourselves on the root chakra is, am I creating? Hmm. Uh, it is uh, 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 a good observation. Uh, uh, hmm. The reason he probably said this is uh, the, the base or the root chakra, uh, especially uh, this is where the kundalini energy resides. Yes. And mm -hmm. creation primarily is coming from that energy. It is the same as the source that is you. Everyone has this kundalini sitting at the base of their spine. Uh, mm -hmm. Perhaps at some point, uh, maybe you have been driving, Heidi, or... Uh, sitting and you nod, you nod off. Do you know what yeah. we're talking? Your head drops. You just yeah. have no control over it. And what we would tell you that this is basically your consciousness is withdrawing. It has, and it is your kundalini energy or your source that is needing recharging. This is what happens during the sleep hours, whether you are aware of it or not, that this energy is reconnecting to all that is and you are being recharged. Now, whether that energy is released into your system or whether it remains at the base of your spine, either way, it is the energy that is, uh, uh, sourcing you or powering you. Let's use that term. When Robin had her Kundalini rising, she would describe it as an electrical lightning bolt that hit her. And this is an electrical component. Your heart is electricity. Yes, running mm -hmm. through it. And uh, this Kundalini energy also has a, a, a charge or a very uh, a sparking. That's what happened when it uh, set off. It is like a snap or a spark that occurs. So we just want to make you aware that uh, this is what's happening in your sleep time, that this energy does need to be recharged. It's one of the things that happens during your sleep. 
uh, now we are veering off a little bit for the question, so maybe you could repeat to, oh, you asked us uh, if he was analyzing this right. So we are telling you that, yes, this is the energy of creation. That is yes. uh, the basis uh, at the base of the spine. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So then we move up to the next sac chakra, which is the sacral, mm -hmm. which is located between um, just below your belly button and above your uh, reproductive organ, I, I guess I would say. Um, yes. This one is associated with um, emotions, creativity, sexual energy. Um, if you have instability emotionally, you might be uninspired, have fear of change, uh, depression, um, addictive mm -hmm. personality. Um, physically, mm -hmm. you might have fertility issues or hormonal imbalances. So let's mm -hmm. talk about that chakra. Yes, uh, we like to describe uh, the sacral chakra, the orange that you are describing, uh, more in terms of uh, 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 free expression. This would be your dance, your singing, uh, your creativity in uh, uh, decorating or uh, baking or uh, anything that would, would require any type of uh, uh, finesse. Let's use mm -hmm. that term. Uh, those that are very blocked in the sacral joint will have a very difficult time moving to music. They will not be free in the hips. They will be very uh, tight uh, and not, not able. And they will also, in their sexual expression, be a little bit uh, closed off or mm -hmm. uh, uh, not quite so experimental or comfortable in their own skin. Let's use that yeah. term. So this is uh, uh, oftentimes when the chakra is... Uh, uh, Hang on a second. Huh? Robin said she may have to uh, recharge her headphones, so she's going to take them out. Yes? Okay. Hang on a second, Heidi. Sorry okay. about that, folks. I'm just going to. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear okay. you. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, primarily, what will happen is people are going to be. Um, not comfortable in their own skin. They're gonna be self-conscious. They're not gonna put their bathing suit out and run out in front of everybody. They're not gonna go on the dance floor and be really free. There's going to feel this constriction or this limiting, uh, and they don't like it. They, they, they see people that are dancing, they see people that are comfortable in their own skin and they want it, but they don't have it, you see. Yeah, yeah. Um, and would you also say that when you have a lower chakra, that has a blockage, that mm -hmm. it is typically affecting the upper chakras as far as blocking them? Or would you say that it doesn't matter if there's a lower chakra blocked, the upper ones could be open? Yes, uh, primarily the one above and below will be affected. Not that it will be totally shut off, but whenever you have to realize that there is a flow of energy, a stream that is uh, connected between these centers. And so when depending, when one is totally shut off or blocked off, uh, oftentimes this is when one becomes ill because there is no uh, movement of fluids in the body and it becomes, uh, if you left a pond standing uh, in the sun uh, for months on end, eventually it would become uh, bacteria laden or uh, the tissue in that area will become saturated. Let's use that term with bacteria. So uh, we would tell you that a partial block, and most of the time they are partial, they will uh, have a tendency to affect the chakra above and below so that when you do detect a blockage in one by uh, the feeling of a heavy pulse is the best description that we could use for that. Or sometimes you just have a knowing. You just know I'm really uncomfortable dancing or I'm really uncomfortable being seen in a swimsuit or uh, expressing myself in public or whatever it is. You, you will know right away in your own knowing that you have a block in this area. So um, oftentimes uh, when you work on that chakra, then it is good to include the one above and the below. Put most of the focus on the one that you're having a problem with and then occasionally go to the one below and above and include the three together. This is the best practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be so nice if our medical industry, and I know they're starting now, but it would be really nice if this knowledge was combined um, because yeah. we mentioned with this energy center, fertility issues, hormonal imbalances, you know, so much of that is being overlooked when they're not looking at the energetic system of the person and where their chakras are blocked or not blocked. And it, isn't it funny, really, that the symbol is the staff, which is the Kundalini uh, for your medical profession in every hospital and uh, clinic that you have, you see. Yeah. So it yeah. started with this awareness and somewhere along the line, it got lost. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the question that Matthias has people um, ask, uh, about the sacral chakra is, do I live in polarity as a creation or separation? 
Yes, uh, that's a good way of putting it because what is really happening, uh, uh, you're talking in the gut now, yes? The, the sacral, the sacral. We're uh, still on the sacral, yes. Uh, uh, repose it again to us. Uh, do I live in polarity as a creation or separation? Yes, yes. Uh, well, we would tell you when uh, you do not feel comfortable in your own skin, you feel very separated because when you are connected to your source, you're very comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, you are in flow, you are feeling good. And oftentimes when that uh, sacral chakra is out of balance, uh, you do not feel comfortable at all. You feel very uh, outside of yourself, uh, not in your not in your own skin. Yes, it's mm -hmm. a good description. So yes, we do uh, also like his description for that as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so then we're moving up to the solar plexus, which is located between below your rib bone and above your navel. Um, this is kind of associated with your self-esteem. Um, yes. Emotional would be low self-esteem, difficulty making decisions, anger, control issues. Uh, physical symptoms could relate to your digestive system, stomach, <laughs> metabolic system. So yes. let's talk about that one. Um, we would like to relate to this uh, as your power center. Uh, and what's really funny about this, this is the, the middle chakra there, the ones below and above, and this is the midpoint or the connecting point between what you call the earthly, earthly realm, which would be more the three lower chakras, and then the heavenly realms, which would be more related to the upper chakras, yes? And then you have, so you have this polarity really, really in this um, uh, midpoint because you can either be uh, over willful, over uh, stubborn and uh, controlling, or you can be weak and you can be not in control at all and walked upon. So it is like there are uh, two polarities in one in the center. And it's very unusual, not that common at all, that a person really reaches the balance point of those two things and comes to a point where they're in power, uh, but they are not overpowering. Yeah. Yes. yes. So uh, this, this is one of the things that can be a little perplexing, but the reason we are bringing this up is because uh, being in the middle point, the, this is kind of a significant uh, center in that it has both the polarity of being uh, willful and then no will. You can have both depending on, so you could have blockages two ways, not just one way. You understand? Yes. I do. Yes. yes. So uh, that, that is what, what we are trying to transmit about this. And so uh, many people who are uh, very controlling, very willful, will be really great manifestors, but they won't always feel good because they'll feel as though they are bulldozing or pushing a lot. They're controlling a lot to get the result that they want. Or you have these others on the other end of the spectrum who feel as though they are being walked on, victimized a little bit, uh, not in control, not able to speak out uh, for themselves or to be... Uh, 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 in control of the life that they are living. Uh, so uh, it's just a, a significant thing to note the polarity here in the center of the body. Okay. And then the question that Matthias wants people to ask themselves regarding the solar plexus is, I am the cause of everything in my life. Am I creating hard stuff? What do I feel? Oh. Uh, what he is signifying here uh, in the question that he is asking uh, is this uh, is your will center. This is where you uh, push yourself, where you direct yourself. Uh, so are you directing yourself in a way that you are creating um, what you want to create and feeling good as you are doing it? Or are you not creating and feeling as though you are disempowered uh, on the other end of that polarity. So it could be one of two things. Or if you have it right, if you are actually balanced in the center, you'll feel quite powerful, but you will not feel as though you have to do it through control. You will feel as though uh, you have good flow, you have uh, uh, confidence uh, without the need to uh, make others believe what you believe. You are not pushing your will upon them, but you are uh, very skilled uh, at achieving what it is you want to achieve. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now we're moving into the heart, which is truly, I think, the center of, you know, everything, the heart, it's where the upper and the lower chakras can, kind of come together. Um, it's where phys physical and spiritual meet. Um, the, the, some emotions associated, if, if it's out of balance, would be grief, anger, jealousy, hatred, um, 
the physical symptoms it affects is the end endocrine system, the lymphatic system, the lungs, the breasts. What did Mateus have to say about it? So his question to ask regarding the heart chakra is, am I in balance? Do I respect my evolution? Do I respect the times of my life? Am I coherent with what I feel and what I love? We would call the heart center the perception center. Uh, it is where you perceive life. Uh, are you going to perceive it, uh, uh, as you said, in anger, in jealousy, in fear? Or are you going to perceive it in love, uh, in uh, possibility, uh, all of the positives, you see? Yeah. Uh, this is what uh, we, would, we would say. What is your perception of your experience? How do you perceive it? Are you perceiving, as you said, in jealousy, in anger? then you are perceiving in fear. See. Mm -hmm. Are you perceiving in happiness? In well, I think we just lost Robin. I'm going to pause. Okay, sorry hmm. about that. We're back now. Robin's going to continue on with the heart chakra. Uh, we had a little glitch in our communication, yes? Uh, but basically what we were saying is the heart center is really your perception center. How are you perceiving the world? Are you in, uh, in fear so you are jealous, you are angry, you are enraged? Uh, this is uh, all a feeling that you would uh, have in the heart center. Or are you feeling as though uh, life is a beautiful thing? Are you choosing your joy, your happiness? Uh, do you feel balanced in this way? And this is the best way that we would describe the heart center to you. Uh, again, these uh, centers, uh, sometimes you have an awareness. Uh, we, uh, Robin has been meaning to do uh, some work or some things for another book that she will be writing coming up. But really, if you really, she one time, uh, just for the sake of asking, uh, started to ask people who had had uh, issues with breast cancer that uh, they would tell her about grandparents. They would say it was in their lineage. And uh, out of her curiosity, she would say to them, hey, um, do you know much about their lives? Did they uh, have heartbreak in their life? Did their husband perhaps cheat on them? Or did someone die at an age when it was very impacting to them? Or did anything happen that may have had an effect upon that center and to her amazement uh, all of them that she had talked to anyway uh, this was in the lineage and she really had to wonder and we would concur with her that sometimes what you call as humans inherited uh, is is feelings or uh, cellular memory or painful mm -hmm. experiences that your relatives have had or experienced that have actually caused a uh, uh, an incongruency uh, within the cellular makeup that is a contributing factor to some of these illnesses. And depending on uh, what you experience as a human and what your ancestors have experienced can cause the centers to be blocked. And you as a human, when you were born as a child, believe it or not, uh, I was, as we have said, are coming in here fully loaded. So all of the experience that your ancestors have had, that your mother has had, that your father has had, many of those things are in the cellular memory. So when you talk about inheritance, um, it's really a complicated thing. It is not just uh, uh, through the DNA, as you call it. There is a cellular memory of uh, experiences that are felt that can be transferred into a human as well. Yeah, that's where it gets tricky because you don't always know, you know, where a lot of things are coming from. You have yes. experiences and you might not feel like it's yours, but it's something maybe that you just agreed to work on and it's in your experience and you just have to move with it, I guess. Yes, they are in the process now. You have probably read uh, where the DNA, uh, much of it they do not understand. They do not have, know how to read the patterning, but they are already knowing that they can make adjustments so they can actually remove uh, spots or places in the DNA where they can see an incongruent pattern or something that could be problematic to the human. And we would tell you uh, in your future, this is something that will be uh, uh, groundbreaking or mm. uh, where adjustments can actually be made in uh, uh a human's life where they can see a pattern coming and make an adjustment to it. Oh, that'll be cool. Yes. Yeah. Then we next move up to the throat chakra. This is uh, uh, speaking our inner truth. Um, not ex if you're if you're having an emotional negative response, you'd be not expressing yourself, or you'd be swallowing words that maybe you didn't feel you could comfortably say. Um, you could also have physical symptoms, sore throat, thyroid, neck or shoulder or headache issues. Uh, let's talk about the throat chakra. 
Yes, we would say this is almost, uh, in our opinion, uh, one of the easy, easiest to detect because we are always talking, uh, mm -hmm. using uh, the words uh, as a means to communicate. So this is a chakra that is active or being used a lot. So uh, a human will definitely feel uh, uh, choked or um, a little bit uh, constricted in the throat area if they have a blockage here, especially if something happens where they would really like to speak out for themselves, but they are not able to, they will definitely feel that choked off feeling, um, that very uncomfortable uh, as though flow is not happening. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, it is a place where uh, uh, a human is really conditioned on how it is they are supposed to act, how they should respond. And much of this shows up in the throat chakra. Children are taught from an early age not to say what it is they are feeling uh, in, in the uh, concern that they may offend someone. So they start holding or they start uh, learning to, to confine or constrict things that normally would come very naturally out of a child. It starts at an early age. And we would say that this is where uh, a lot of the problems are beginning. Um, a human will, uh, same thing, if you are breathing into the chakra, you will definitely Definitely feel that it is laden or heavy. Uh, you will have problems expressing yourself. You will hold your opinions to yourself because you'll be afraid to share them. Um, these will be some of the signs or symptoms. Yes. And Matthias's question on the throat chakra is, is what I say the truth? Do I express this? Do I say what I want to or do I shut down? Yes. And I think that is basically what we described. Uh, a person will either be uh, wide open and to the point where some can't handle it, too truthful, or they may be constricted and not able to speak their truth at all. So you can see in most of the centers, uh, it is a very fine tuning uh, uh, situation. And you asked us earlier, are they uh, once open, stayed open? How could they really? Because every experience that you're having, that you're reacting to, there's a decision to be made how it is you're going to respond to it. And that response is basically what is going to govern uh, that center. So to find that balance, that middle point of uh, standing up for yourself and speaking out, but not being too overbearing to the point where you might feel that you're shutting someone else's centers down uh, can be a difficult task. So uh, it's really a touchy-feely kind of situation that you find yourself in. Yes. Yeah. And then we move to the third eye, um, located right here between the two eyebrows. Um, it's your center of intuition. Um, some emotional uh, imbalances could be judgmental, dismissive, or overwhelmed, could have anxiety associated with this as well. And physical headaches, dizziness, brain, eyes, pituitary gland, some of the physical associations to a blocked or imbalanced third eye. Yes. Um, well, the third eye is basically your uh, uh, intuition, your perception of uh, how much you are able to believe in what you know, what you feel. Uh, this is a big determining factor, how open that center is will make you feel more confident in your intuition, more uh, willing to rely upon it. And as you rely upon something, uh, it becomes stronger. It is no different than a relationship that you have with someone uh, as you are with them longer and as you can count on them and rely on them, that connection to them becomes uh, more stable and stronger because of it. And we would tell you that your third eye is much the same. Uh, the, the third eye has the ability to see both forward and then through the back of the head. Many think that the third eye is just between the forehead, but uh, it ha you have the ability to see anything. You can see into the past or you could see into the future or you could be in the present moment if the center were completely open. So it is good to know that it is a multifaceted uh, center, this third eye is. Uh, uh, and much of it is related to your openness, to your spirituality. We would tell you that a sign that it was closed, uh, you would not believe in any uh, uh, afterlife or previous life or uh, some of the terms or, or things that we have talked about on previous uh, recordings. If you had a completely closed third eye, this would be of no interest to you. You would probably not have this ability to be open. And we tell people, uh, some get very frustrated when they are on this journey and they're really enjoying it and they start to learn that they're the creators of their life and they want to share it with everyone and make them really happy and have them get the lives that they want to get to, only to find out that they are met with the door is slammed in their face and we would tell you that primarily this is part of the reason if this center is closed that human does not have the ability to perceive what it is you are trying to get them to perceive yep yeah it's i i forget exactly how that saying goes but something to the effect that 
people can only understand you from where, you know, from where they are for, you know, like yes. you might have a conversation with one person and they completely are on the same page and they get it. And you could have that same conversation with someone that wasn't, and they would not, they wouldn't understand. And it isn't necessarily a good or a bad or a wrong or a right. It's just that they're not on yes. that level to understand. Yep. And many yeah. people take this personally and they, they should not, you see, because uh, this is a evolutionary process that every human is on. And there are, there is no time frame. There's no better than, bigger than, higher than level that anybody is on. And so each of you, as we have told you, are a sovereign being. And this also includes your spirituality unfoldment. Uh, it doesn't really matter. This is an eternal, uh, you are forever creating uh, the life you are in, the lives you will have. Uh, so uh, we really want people to get that understanding that uh, many people feel uh, that if they haven't had a Kundalini rising or they haven't had some type of spiritual signal or sign that somehow they're behind or they're not doing the right thing, where we would tell you that someone could come along and have absolutely no study at all and have a full-blown Kundalini awakening. We have told you that too. So right. uh, it is never to judge where you are at on the path because you may soon be surprised by it. Yes. Yeah. Well, and even in, I think you're recording from yesterday when you talked about, you know, looking at someone maybe that's life is in a shambles and, yes. you know, maybe from the human point of view, we might say, oh, well, they're, they're kind of in a mess, but they might be in a really high level of deciding to take on a lot of stuff. Yes. And we're just seeing it as, oh, this lowly person. And that's not the case at all. We're just confusing it because we don't have the whole picture. Uh, and really, Heidi, it all works in um, perfection because uh, as many of you judge the ones that you are seeing behaving in ways that you are deeming as not uh, the right way, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. this actually accelerates their distaste for themselves uh, as they view it in others' distaste of them. We're not condoning. We would love for you to try to lift them up by seeing them differently than what they are. But we would tell you there's no imperfection in the way that things are going because you will only magnify the experience for them and push them through it uh, because they will become more and more intolerant of themselves uh, as they see it mirrored back to them. Yeah, yeah. And Matthias's question for uh, the third eye is, what do I feel from within? Because this is your mirror. Yes. What do I feel from within? And we would say that is perception. Mm -hmm. How am I perceiving? Uh, how am I? Uh, how am I trusting mm -hmm. in what it is I know? What it is I feel I can count on? We cannot drive home enough how important it is to believe in yourself and in your own intuition and to follow it because this relationship that you build is one that you are building with your higher self when you do this because this is where the communication is coming from. If you don't listen to it, if you don't believe in it, you cannot derive the benefit from it, you see. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we uh, agree with him and, and that is what we would add to it. Okay. Okay. And then we're to the top of the head, to the crown chakra, the center of enlightenment. Um, if we have emotional imbalances for that being blocked, it, we might be apathetic or listless. Or on the other side of the spectrum, we could be superficial or arrogant. Um, and then illnesses pertaining to the head region physically. Yes. Uh, this center is an important center. Uh, when Robin used to do her meditations, uh, there, there's actually a small flower that is just about three or four inches above the head. And then there is the larger one, which we're going to refer to next. That is the, mm -hmm. uh, the large lotus flower. Uh, and we would say Robin was correct in her assumption that she would load that thousand petal uh, big chakra, yes, the white, the large white chakra that was two feet or so above the head, that you pull the energy down from all that is, and you load that center to the point where it is so full of energy that it has no choice but to push its way down through the other centers in the body. You see, mm -hmm. this is, uh, uh, if this is blocked, your other centers are all going to have problems. They're going to be uh, not energized or not uh, funded. Let's use that term, term uh, with the amount of energy that they are needed to be clearing and spinning and operating at an optimum level. So this is a very important chakra. Okay. So you mentioned um, when we sleep, um, I think you might have said another uh, thing 
as well. But mainly when we sleep, we're recharging our energy system. Um, now, when you say that, are you speaking inclusively of Kundalini or are you just talking about recharging these energy, these chakra centers? What, what did you mean specifically by that? Uh, I'm talking specifically about your reservoir of your life force energy that is at the base of your spine. This is what is being recharged uh, during the sleeping hours. Okay, so so then that would include or is the kundalini? Is that, that is the kundalini yeah. energy. Uh, and, yes. But you are able to draw life force energy down through the energy center, as we mm -hmm. had just discussed, yes? Yep. Uh, which will travel down the chakras and which can also, through your intention, plug you in or uh, bring in intentionally. Uh, but how many of you do that every single day for any length of time? So this is why the nighttime is so important because this is going to happen regardless of you knowing it or not, you see. But also drawing the life force energy into the top uh, lotus flower, the large one we're talking about, and then imagining pulling it down through each one of your energy centers can actually uh, energize all of your centers. And when you energize your centers, this can cause a kundalini rising or an awakening of that energy that is sitting at the base of your spine. Okay. And then the last uh, question Matthias had for the crown chakra is, what do I think of self? How do you feel about that? Well, if this center is closed, uh, you, you would not have any other opinion of yourself other than either what others held of you or what was being mirrored to you or what you were truly just believing of yourself. When you become connected to all that is, and this center is open, you're in the love of self, in acceptance of self. You are uh, not expecting perfection. You are of the understanding that you are an experiencer who is on this plane having experiences uh, and that there, there's going to be varying degrees uh, to how you do them. And you are not determining your worth by them. You are simply allowing your human uh, to experience. And through that experience, you are choosing a preference of what you really would like to have by the way you have felt, by what it is you have experienced. That's basically what uh, is occurring, you see. And in all that is, uh, in the higher realms, as we have talked to you before, uh, when a human has an experience that perhaps they are not liking very much, it is very apparent in all that is what you are really wanting, and, and, and also apparent to you as a human, what you really want uh, instead of what you are feeling. You really want its opposite most times if it is something negative. Uh, so uh, that, that is how we would answer that question. Okay. And then we wanted to uh, bring out a few details of today's podcast. Um, Robin and I were talking before we came online today about um, having an object that represents your high self. Um, and we wanted to talk about ways to heal pain and manifest what you want um, having to do with belief and maybe you could tie in the object the high self object yes yes um, we have a remedy or a method that we like to offer humans um, primarily when they're experiencing a lot of pain but it, this can be used in manifestation as well so we will give you the description uh, running in both directions that you may employ this technique yourself you see uh, and what we want you to do is we would like you to sit uh, quietly for a few minutes and then we would like you to ask yourself for a symbol of your high self and whatever comes to you uh, for Robin's husband Dave it was a copper penny uh, he ended up going to a pickleball match in the morning and found an African coin coin it was a little tiny copper thing that he found which he did not expect to find but he knew right away it was a symbol so he picked that one up and brought it home robin had the uh pink stone uh, which was her symbol and she went out and got that and so primarily what you're going to do is you're going to bring something as a human in form because this is what you do as a creator uh you first uh, uh, want for something or ask for something and we ask the high self for a symbol and it's given it to us and then you bring it into form so now you go out and get the item that has been given to you and you're going to use this as your uh, uh, high self you're going to refer to this as it and so you're going to have communication. You're going to build a relationship with this object, basically, is what you're going to do. So we have a lot of humans that suffer with uh, different types of ailments, pain. And we know that 
we're going to tell you something. Pain is optional. And why is it? Because most pain is connected to some type of an emotional response, either uh, from this life, a past life, or your lineage. It's something to do uh, with some type of a held painful emotion, uh, and then it results in the body as a blockage, which then results in pain, you see. So we had a couple of clients, and we gave them this technique about getting the object, and they got it, yeah. And so what we tell them in the practice to do is, for example, if you have a knee that is really bothering you, or your low back is really bothering you. We had a really funny client for some reason that it was so uh, revealing to him to realize the emotion that was repeated over and over and he could really understand the amount of pain that he had in his body when it was all tied into this one emotion, you see. And so we asked him when he felt the pain in his low back, uh, how did it make him feel emotionally? And uh, we are thinking right now what the response it was, but uh, uh, that doesn't really matter. But there was an emotion that he tied to it, you see. And then we asked him about his knee. When he had problems with his knee, uh, if he had to name an emotion, and uh, remarkably so, it was the same emotion that he had named uh, for his back. And this went on in many areas of his body, you see. And all of a sudden he realized uh, could I be the creator of all this pain by holding that emotion to that degree, to that height in so many different areas? Mm -hmm. And so then what we asked him to do was to take this item that we had instructed him to get from his high self and to hold it to himself twice a day and to tell the item that he's having a lot of pain in his body, in his stomach, and it's primarily the emotion of blah, blah, blah whatever it is. And then he asked the high self, which is the object, I would like you to heal this emotion so that I no longer need to have the response of pain in my body. And so we had him do this twice a day uh, for a week. And generally what happens is we like a, a client or a person to rate the level of pain. If you are in a, uh, having pain in your back, we'll, we'll ask you initially, between one and 10, where are you at? Maybe the person says, I'm at an eight. And we would tell you something excuse us, within a week or two weeks tops of doing this practice twice a day, uh, we will do a re-rating and we will find it down to a one or a two or practically gone, you see. So this is something that can be used, but the more descriptive you are about the emotions, and primarily they're in three categories, they would be in the category of anxiety, the category of anger, uh, and then the category of sadness. And if you think of what emotions fall into each one of those categories, you would get a little bit of an idea of what, what would be sameness for you or what, what is uh, behind some of the pain that you're having. And what's really going to be uncanny about this for you is you're going to find a repeat of an emotion that's generally, especially if you have pain in multiple areas of your body, that's repeating itself over and over again. Uh, and this is really the wonderful uh, uh, magnificence of the body that you have trying to get your attention for what it is you're holding within yourself um, by repeating itself over and over in different areas of your body you see so then uh, as we did this uh, with this client for a while we had another session with them and we said well hey you know you can use that symbol for the good stuff too it doesn't just have to be for something that is ailing you you could say uh, how would I feel what emotion would I feel uh, if I had just the amount of money I wanted, the house that I wanted, the mate that I wanted. And then they, then they can name that emotion that they are wanting to add. I would feel really satisfied. I would feel really grateful. I'd be so happy. I'd feel so fulfilled. Whatever it is that you want to feel is what you tell uh, your object, yes? And so as you add this feeling, the universe then goes out and calls for circumstances and situations to fulfill you in those areas that you are asking for. Um, we think it is a wonderful tool to use and uh, bringing something into form uh, really has a magnifying effect. What's going to happen is Robin has hers next to her nightstand and she uses it nightly and it has become like a person to her. And this is what surprised her is in a very short time of using it uh, regularly before she goes to sleep at night, uh, she realizes that I am building a relationship with myself without even knowing it. You see? And it's very hard for a human to do this or to obtain this level of connection and belief just talking out into the sky or not having an object like this to focus their attention on. So there's a very useful tool that we would highly recommend to all of you to use. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good one. I, I tried it a little bit, but the object that I saw for myself is one that I don't know where I'll find. So maybe I need to do the process again and come up with something that's a little easier to find so that I yes, have something uh, I can you physically can, utilize. Uh, you can draw it, Heidi. You can yes. make it. Uh, it doesn't matter. It is more about the symbolization of it. Um, you can put it in a frame uh, if that serves you. Uh, and this is the best way to do it. See. Sure.
part of, we want to just mention, uh, part of uh, this effect of belief and this working for you is to take the object that is given to you and not feel as though there's a better one coming. This would symbolize that somehow you have mistaken it, somehow you have not gotten the right one or there's a better one out there. Uh, this is about building trust, building a bond. So we would highly recommend you use the symbol you were given. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, we hope you guys enjoyed uh, our discussion on chakras and you'll get some benefit out of the tip that Athena provided with you. Um, we'd love to hear from you if you do get a high self object and what your experiences are with it and you'd like to share with us, please do so. You can always email me, Heidi, at athenaintruth.com with any questions or comments or if you'd like to ever be on uh, the YouTube with us. Any final thoughts, Athena? Uh, and referring to the object, we would just say it's really no different than uh, someone wearing a saint around their neck or a cross uh, or any type of a divination tool that someone uses. It is the belief that you put in it, uh, uh, not the uh, item itself. But having something in form when you are a human is a great creative tool for you to use. Yes. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Good day.